G'day everyone and welcome back to Our Paranormal World. You may not have heard of Mirandajo, but he was possibly one of the most bizarre humans ever to live. He was born in August 1912, Arnold Gerrit Henskis in the Netherlands, and he became famous for radically piercing his body with different kinds of objects and apparently escaping injury and the death that really would come for most of us from such a thing. Which is quite amazing in itself, if somewhat nauseating, but there was more to Mirandajo than a simple ability to tolerate stupid amounts of cringe-inducing injuries. His childhood was fairly normal, except for the fact that he would frequently wake up covered in paint and find paintings on his easel after he'd apparently been painting in his sleep. On one occasion, he is reported to have painted a perfect portrait of an aunt, only he had never met her or even seen her picture. At around the age of 30, he suffered a very serious injury and soon realised that he wasn't experiencing any pain or any other form of discomfort or impediment from that injury. He became convinced that he was actually invulnerable and incredibly, he began frequenting bars and cafes and offering random strangers the opportunity to kill him with knives in exchange for money, which evidently people gleefully accepted. I guess you don't get an offer like that every day. But his apparent masochism didn't end there. He would also swallow glass and razor blades, which is a discomforting thought at any part of the swallowing and elimination process, but it is clear that he survived all of these attempts because his renown grew and he took the stage name Mirandajo, which is based on the Esperanto word for wonder, and he began performing at a concert hall in Zurich. Eyewitness reports of these performances state that Dajo would sit in the centre of the stage, naked to the waist. An assistant, who must have truly relished his job, would then run him through with an 80 centimetre long foil, which is a super pointy sword whose only real practical application is piercing meat, and that is exactly what it did. Doctors who observed his performances became somewhat convinced he was utilising some form of hypnosis to endure the damage. But he walked and talked as normal, even with the knife thoroughly skewering him. It was clear that the foil was actually piercing his body, but Dajo seemed to suffer no ill effects, even walking himself off to be x-rayed with the foil still in place and bleeding little even after the knife was extracted. His experiments with his invulnerability eventually became even crueler on his own body, with heated or rusty knives being used on him. And on one occasion, he was stabbed 10 times, with the placement of those wounds being expected to have inflicted mortal damage on the heart or lungs of any other person. At some stage, his performances became actually offensive to crowds, with the noises of knives scraping on his bones, upsetting patrons in ways an 80 centimetre knife piercing directly through a body had been unable. And he took his performances on the road again. Once, Dajo broke his arm, and when the bones had been physically put back into place, the apparent damage of that break disappeared altogether. In an interview with Time magazine, he claimed he'd been tested with burning irons and boiling water, cringe, as well as having been shot in the head with an arrow on two separate occasions at a distance of only half a yard, about 18 inches. He supported this by showing the scars from these arrows, one in the centre of his forehead and the other above his right eye. He believed his body lost its physical form during these demonstrations and others witnessed that he would become somewhat invisible. 
none of which is apparent in any of the images of him, but that's what they said. He believed he was being spoken with and protected by angels, and more specifically, God. He believed his performances showed people that they should abandon the materialistic world, and that God was showing the world through him that there was much that we don't understand. He believed materialism resulted in personal and social misery and wars. In 1947, Dajot moved to Switzerland and was granted a licence to perform in public there. He teamed up with Jan Dirk de Groot, who had been his neighbour and a trusted friend for several years. According to de Groot, Dajo had several guardian angels. He could heal people and was telepathic. De Groot often heard Dajo in conversations with his angels, and though he could only ever hear Dajo's side of the conversation, thoroughly believed his friend was indeed communicating with a higher force. Along with the standard sword piercing, which de Groot said took a lot of force to run through Dajo, they also conducted demonstrations where Dajo would be pierced with numerous giant sharpened hollow needles attached to hoses through which water would be pumped after they pierced his body, turning him into a human fountain. And that is what's going on in this image. On the 11th of May, 1948, Dajo claimed that he was instructed by the voices, which may or may not have been divine, to eat a steel pin. After glass and razor blades, a steel pin is seemingly nothing, but Dajo's plan was that the pin should be surgically removed without anaesthetic. The pin is shown here in an X-ray taken on May 12. The surgery was scheduled for May 13, and with a resounding chorus of heck no, the doctors refused to conduct the surgery without anaesthesia, and the pin was removed on a sleeping and much less creepy patient. Dajo spent several days recuperating from that surgery in hospital and went for a walk through the centre of Zurich to demonstrate his total recovery upon release. Ten days later, when de Groot arrived home after collecting his wife at the airport, they checked on Dajo and discovered him apparently meditating, laying down on his bed. De Groot was entirely used to Dajo's extended meditations, but his wife wasn't so much, and she was thoroughly creeped out by a person laying there, giving the appearance of being actually dead. De Groot claimed he checked Dajo's pulse that day and found it to be normal and left him to his meditations. Dajo was still meditating after three days, however, possibly proving De Groot's wife right, and when he was checked again, Dajo was found to be cold. The medical examiner found he'd been dead for a day and he had died due to a spontaneous aortic rupture. And so Mirandajo apparently proved that meditation is way more dangerous than getting skewered with a sword or even shot in the head with an arrow at close range. And although I hope no one watching this video would be crazy enough, I am going to say, please don't try any of this at home. The meditation or the sword or arrow stuff, it's just crazy dangerous and you will probably actually die the first time you try it. Anyway, if you aren't subscribed to this channel, you might want to ask yourself why not. It's free and full of stuff you'll probably never get asked at a trivia night. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.